best way to understand your financial situation is finance report. It's issued every week. And here you can see income, financing, taxes, sea trade, loot if you're doing any kind of looting. Market function here is still not available, but will be in future patches. Army expenses like salary, officers, or training if you're conducting any kind of training. Salary is not really clear or like how much you're paying for each individual company. For example, uh, militia unit or fusilier unit or grenadier unit. But it's safe to say that professional troops cost way more money. They do not only put a lot of pressure on your officer corps, but as we said, on, on paying salaries. So avoid making all your army professional. The army that's going to do a lot of fighting should be more professional and the army that's just going to guard the towns and settlements should be more militia-like. We can see also fleet expenses. Uh, if you have large fleet, it will cost a lot of money, so be careful. Intelligence expenses showcases how much you're paying for your spies, your information, your missions. Um, civil expenses uh, consist of construction, production, renting factories and renting shipyards we will cover this a little bit later and material reports show cases of how much material you have material is used for any kind of construction you can use them for settlement level buildings or colony or province level infrastructure projects uh, we can see weekly report every week we get 143.8 uh, material and this is what we need to know the first thing we see when we click on a settlement would be loyalty. Here is 100%. If the loyalty is below 50, it will turn red. And this is where you need to have uh, some garrisoning regiments in order to prevent actual rebellion in the region and basically region turning sides in the war. Um, the higher the loyalty, the more recruits you can have. The lower the loyalty, less recruits you can have. And if it's very low, you cannot really... Uh, start new regiments in this region. Uh, the next thing to do is to check workforce and slaves. They directly contribute to the economic output of this settlement in the region as a whole, or the, the province, um, as well as construction points. Construction points allow you to quickly build different different buildings um, in your cities or the province levels. The higher construction points you have, the quicker the building will be built. So uh, there is a difference usually between the fort settlements and actual cities. Cities usually have higher construction points, but it's not always the case. Uh, we can see uh, troops camping capacity. Here it's uh, 3,700. If you go over that number, you can. But your troops will get sick, they will attrition, and you're going to lose men over time. So usually try to keep it below the camping capacity. Uh, here we can see ammo is basically uh, all the, the fighting your armies can do. Whenever they fight, they use ammunition. And provisions are used basically to feed uh, the armies that are uh, occupying the fort. Uh, we have fort settlement. Uh, it has increased capacity for the army. It has different level of fortification from one the lowest to three the highest that provides a bigger fort or better protection for the troops inside and it gives buffs to ammunition storage and provision storage but if you click on a different type of settlement like um, let's say maybe new haven we can see that it has town hall it gives us uh, loyalty and we have docks that are used for production of um, naval forces or ships, basically. And uh, we can see another settlement uh, that's uh, Morristown. It's a continental settlement and has no dock here. If we click here, we can see that uh, there are different types of buildings you can construct inside of uh, each settlement. Uh, first thing we can see is blacksmiths here. Blacksmiths are used for factory production. They can be for boost up factories. They give you more points. You can use those points basically to speed up production of cannons or, or muskets or rifles. The next here is a recruiting house. Recruiting house will basically increase recruitment uh, of uh, troops in the region. Carpenter's shop uh, will give you material. We talked about material here, and this is the, the weekly report. Well, the more carpenter shops you have, 
the more material you can get every every week. The next is stable. Uh, we use stables to get uh, horse production started. Uh, horses are very expensive in this game. They're very much necessary uh, for wagons, for some types of artillery, and specifically for cavalry regiments. So if you want to have them, uh, you need to start building them as early as possible. Schoolhouses, um, they allow you low officers. Low officers are officers that you cannot name, but they exist in all of your armies. Uh, basically, all the regiments are consisted of, of regular troops and officers. If you fight battles as your men die and you need replenishment, you will need more and more officers. So this is one of the most important buildings in the game. The next thing to see here is armory. Armory is used to increase ammunition storage. Uh, every few clicks or every week or so, you get uh, new munition from the capital in this case, uh, you can see the star. This is the capital of um, this province. And uh, munition will be produced in the capital. It will be distributed to different settlements uh, across the field. So if you have armory, this is where all those munitions will be stored. Uh, we can see warehouse is uh, the same, but with provisions. All the provisions that are made will be stored in, in a warehouse. So it will take time. Uh, especially if you're recruiting troops or maybe keeping troops for a long periods of time, you need to have armory and, and a warehouse basically there. Printing press is very interesting because it increases loyalty of specific regions, especially if you move to the north, to the Canada, where the loyalty is very much on the British side, you will need printing press. And then you can combine it with a church because church will buff the loyalty over time then uh, we can see weaver's house weaver's house is the economic type of building we did not see this so far it produces textiles textiles are used for ship construction and also used for very specific type uh, of infantry like uh, maybe grenadiers or guard units you can also use it uh, as a sale product you can sell it for money basically uh, rum distillery house uh, basically provides you with rum. Uh, you can use rum in a very specific role. It's not as useful as textiles, but it's uh, very expensive and you can sell it for a lot of money on the market. Uh, we can also see here that um, there is a timer. Basically, the higher construction points you have, the quicker something is being built. So this will take 14 days to complete. It will cost 500 US dollars and five construction material. You can upgrade almost all of these buildings, but you need specific technologies researched. And this is something that we'll talk about a bit later. Um, but they will increase productivity. They will cost more. Of course, you will have to pay more money and more material. It will take more time to construct, but they will give you a lot of benefits. Um, one more thing that I wanted to, uh, talk about, uh, would be fur trade. Fur trade is also very lucrative and, um, you should build it as the, to kickstart your economy. So whenever you start, uh, whenever you can see, uh, fur traders is something that you have to build, but I would usually recommend you building. Uh, give me a second. I will usually recommend you building um, carpenter shop first. This should be the first building, and if you have a way to build economic buildings, then they should be the next ones to get built. If not, you should build the officer schools at the start of your campaign, and then we will talk about construction order. Um, but that's pretty much it when it comes to. Uh, direct city management we talked quite a lot about construction points but not how to increase them for example let's say that we want to build up uh, weaver's house it takes 19 days to construct so before i click here i can um, for example click to the countryside of the, this province go to the plus icon and here you can see construction let's click there if we click here we can find an officer for example, this officer will give us uh, 2.31 plus construction. This one is 2. Depending on, on uh, what officer uh, you can find, they can increase or decrease these points. So let's go with... Um, where is that guy? 
okay this one it's really good you pay 500 us dollars per week and it will increase your construction points so let's check it out it's four and let's see the timer now it was 19 days if i remember now it's eight so we click here and we get it well uh what is this useful because you have to pay for it so it's not not free and you also have uh, to have a high ranking officer to be able to pull it off sometimes uh, as i mentioned before some forts have lower construction points this one is even good fort pen has a lot of population but some forts like fort saratoga you can see are much more modest and have uh, very low construction points and if you need to construct something maybe you need to upgrade a fort or uh, i recommend it to use it for forts that actually have um, economic buildings like fur factory or textile factory you can primarily build those buildings and basically just sell the extra resources you will get a lot of money and it will just pay for itself you're left with the infrastructure that you can use so it's pretty neat besides that you can also have loyalty um you can pay one thousand per week and pay one rum bottle but you need to have rum right um to increase the the loyalty of a specific region or province uh it increases by 2.5 it's very expensive but if you need it you can give it a try you can also use it for recruitment uh if you need to get your armies real quick you can use this one uh, only 500 uh, per week and the low ranking officers you can increase the number of uh low ranking officers um 250 us dollars per week i never used it but uh maybe you can give it a try it's important to know that the option exists if we click off from the city to the countryside we can see that ui would change here we can see region control how many parts of this region or this colony we actually control uh we can see workforce and recruits which is pretty standard but the new thing here would be income you can see how much income you're getting every week from the specific region we can see provisions that means how much is coming from the farms uh what is the the base points uh what are the multipliers for the weather uh, or the season you, you see the factual result in the end uh, also construction material um, how much we're getting from mining from uh, loyalty bonuses the ultimate result here we can see strategic resources there are different kinds of strategic resources uh, around the provinces some of them have like three uh, some of them have none well depends on the province here we can see uh, region terrain different regions uh, can have different buffs or different performances when it comes to battles as well when it comes to industry agriculture mining and uh, the biggest change here would be that we can see some new icons of uh, agriculture uh, shipyard infrastructure production infrastructure here we have a new slot uh, here some slots are locked well why and uh, in order to answer this question we can click here or we can go to construction management over there this is province level infrastructure projects we can see that everything is new kind of different colors uh, different ui different icons everything is so strange right but don't worry it's not that complex uh let's start first with colors green color means that you can build something there right now as we speak uh yellow means that there is construction underway and the red means that you cannot build anything there anymore uh we can also see the numbers here five out of five seven out of seven what does it mean well you have five construction slots or seven construction slots and five uh constructed buildings or seven constructed buildings that means no more can be built here on the other side we have uh, two out of four that means that basically you have four slots but two constructions made and here we have uh, one plus one through five that means that we have already one constructed one is being constructed as we speak and there are five slots that's it um in the lower section of this bar we can see uh wood we can see iron we can see salt pepper, agriculture we can see i don't know coal or copper these are raw materials and you can use different buildings to kind of beef up uh your raw material production so here we can go with agriculture because this region actually um supports agriculture 
by nature and if we build it here we're gonna have more provisions coming from this region uh when it's being constructed we can see it takes 70 days to build it here but uh for example we have uh, kingston new york we're building a mine why mine here because we have iron we have copper and we have wood these are the resources we can get with a mine uh we're paying specific amount of money and specific amount of uh, construction material but in like 100 plus days, we're going to get a new mine. We only have one and we're going to get another one. This will increase our production of raw materials. Raw materials are very much necessary uh, when it comes to production and uh, of like industry like muskets or cannons, um, ammunition, or for ship productions as well. Then uh, we have uh, factories. Factories can build built pretty much anywhere it doesn't matter although they're basically the most expensive type of uh production facilities and um they take a lot of time to construct uh the next one would be shipbuilding capability uh they're actually a bit of more expensive uh you can only build them in coastal regions if you want to uh increase the the production of your ships we also have the military buildings uh, they increase the number of uh, regiments available here so if you're lacking army if you're uh, struggling with uh, the the countless we are today we can just uh, build some in different regions they're not very expensive so we can build them in different regions well uh, different regions have different construction speeds so the higher the construction power of the region the faster you will have something built so firstly you prioritize regions that have uh, higher construction points they can uh, quickly finish it and you can get more in return quicker but as you develop your settlements as you develop your economy you'll be able to afford constructing things even in the provinces where they're not very efficient constructing stuff the same applies to the cities different cities have different construction values and you first prioritize the cities with higher construction values uh, and then the lower ones will come uh, after that's pretty much it but if we have limitations sometimes to unlock limitations there are some lock slots if you remember before we can use um logistics or infrastructure uh you click there and uh, now infrastructure is being built it will take some time it's an expensive process it's a long process but uh potentially it will unlock the next construction so when you are done with uh constructing we have five out of five we cannot construct anything more here we use infrastructure to unlock more slots and then we can build more factories or uh, more mines usually we build factories in a productive region like connecticut it's very efficient um we can build factory here for example uh we build mines wherever we can see iron or copper copper is the, the the scarcest resource in the game it's very difficult to find it it exists only a couple of provinces especially at the start of the game so prioritize building mine immediately in new york here uh it's very important um and that's pretty much it uh, here you can see all the construction that's being made and uh, maybe you can pause it you can uh, turn it off you can get your refunds as well um, well i hope that you guys now understand this a little bit better you need to click to colonies management and here we can see different colonies all the colonies that we have are here we can see how much of a control do we have over them we can see our workforce we can see the number of regions the number of uh, regions we are holding uh we can see how much money we get every week and all the materials we're getting every week as well you can turn this off that means that no materials will be gathered but the costs of gathering materials will be zero here we can see construction points for the region and we can also click on the doctrine there are different types of doctrines of course uh construction one they will increase construction um around the province but you have to pay money every week uh, we have mining as well this will increase our mining output we have production but because uh, we don't have actual uh, factories here it's zero it doesn't cost anything propaganda will increase your popularity but you have to pay a lot of money for that 
Uh, provision, of course, uh, we can see extra four provision points, but 200 uh, US dollars. Basically, uh, the more factories you have, the more mines you have, the more agricultural buildings you have, uh, they will give you bigger output, but you have to pay more money from different doctrine. And recruiting is, uh, well, this. You'll get more recruits, basically. Uh, besides this, you can go to uh, from manual to actually AI control settlements. You can decide to have uh, army development. You can have uh, production development or supply development. This is something that I really like. I, I prefer to manage my own provinces as I see fit. I think this one is the best. But if you are a little bit tired or lazy or you don't really know what to build, then maybe you can give it a try uh, depending on what your needs are. And um, here we can see government structure and uh, we can see taxation level. Currently, there is no option to change taxation level, um, but we will see in the, the future patches this will be available. Provisions and ammunition are the key in this game. They are needed not only to sustain your army, but also to uh, recruit new regiments. Without uh, ammo and provisions, you cannot do that. Also, if you have no food, your armies will slowly die out. They will attrition, they will get sick, and uh, your soldiers will abandon your armies. On the other side, if there is no ammo, uh, you can fire, but at much, much slower rate, and this will also negatively affect the morale of your troops. So what can we do first about provisions? Uh, provisions, if we click here, we can see that we have a lot of uh, agricultural infrastructure. The best time to get um, your provisions is during the summertime. If we look here, uh, we can see that there is a weather multiplier. It's minus 68 because now we're in the month of October. And the more we progress towards the winter season, there will be less and less provisions. Um, the opposite happens during the spring. You have more and more provisions as you kind of progress towards the summer. But winter here is, is very harsh. Um, your unit's attrition. It's very difficult to carry any kind of offensive um, actions. Uh, you will... You cannot probably buy any more provisions, so you need to prepare before the winter season comes. In order to do so, besides building agricultural infrastructure, uh, you can always go to your colonies management. And uh, for example, uh, we can find uh, our, our own province. Uh, in this case, it's Boston. Uh, we go to the doctrine, as I mentioned before. And for example, we can get um, a lot more food if we uh, pay the provision doctrine. So it's a good way if you're worried about the winter season to do so. But also, you need to build um, uh, regional warehouses. These are the places where you can actually stockpile your supplies. Sometimes you can have a lot of supplies, but they will just disappear. And uh, they don't really exist in the game. Your troops can be starving and there is nothing you can do. The same happens with ammunition. Uh, if we look here, you can see that our ammunition um, state here. It's pretty damn low. Uh, you might think, oh, you don't really have ammo. And if we go to the market, this is the only way we can actually check the current state of ammo. You can see how much ammo we have, actually. It's almost 1,800 ammo. But our armies are still struggling when it comes to ammo because I did not build um, ammo depots. So make sure to do that. And every day, um, the better the infrastructure you have, um, you can see that there are small wagons moving to different settlements from the province to different settlements. And uh, this is how you get your provisions. This is how you get your munitions. But make sure to build the warehouses um, to put those provisions and ammo in, especially in cities where you're producing your armies or keeping them for a longer period of time. As well, make sure to control the main province. Um, in this case, it's Boston, Massachusetts. Um, but uh, if you're controlling Leicester and Salem, even though you have a lot of factories, you have mines, you have um, agricultural buildings, your output will be much, much lower. Uh, you will face some punishments. If you control the capital of the province, you can see it with a star, uh, you get basically buffs. If you don't control it, you get major def debuffs in pretty much any aspect of the economy. If we click on headquarters, we can see there are different guys here. Commander in chief, chief of intelligence, artillery chief, quartermaster chief, chief engineer, and chief of navy. Well, they serve different purposes. They research different technologies. They're responsible for different things. But when it comes to the economy, um, commander in chief is very, very important. Uh, here we have two options, salary and bounty. 
salary is how much you pay every week. We can see 17,000. And if you increase the salary, you can see that, well, you have to pay more money, but unit morale is higher, uh, but the surgeon rate will be lower. If we lower down the salary, you can see that already it's warning you here that it's below the optimal. You'll pay less, uh, but unit morale will be lower. Whenever you fight, your units are more likely to route. And as well, uh, the surgeon rate will be higher. So try to keep a balance in here. Uh, bounty is not as important, I would say. It just determines of how much you're paying uh, potential new recruits. So uh, if the bounty is higher, you will have more recruits joining your army. If the bounty is lower, uh, it will be more difficult to find recruits. But it's um, 180 per 100 recruits. So it's not a big deal, I would say. Uh, the next thing is um, Chief of Intelligence. We can see here that uh, this can go to from zero to like a very big sum of money. This is something you pay every day. So don't joke about it. It's very, very expensive. The job of Chief of Intelligence is to look for the enemies. The more money you pay, you will get more adequate uh, data of enemy movements, enemy garrisons, how many men there are, what type of, of men are these uh, militia or these actual professional infantry and stuff like that. Uh, but it costs a lot of money, as I said. Every day you pay for this fee, so you better make it count you also uh get specific types of missions and um you can uh, go into kind of a counter espionage when you prevent enemies from destroying your supplies or uh bribing your officers to join them and stuff like that but it's very very expensive so i will keep it uh the, the base level for the most of the game um, then we have artillery chief, but it's only about training. It costs munition, not the actual uh, money. So it's more of a production thing. Uh, we also going to talk about the chief engineer and chief of the Navy. Uh, chief engineer can control additional factories. So you have your own factories, you have your own production, but if that's not enough, you can always rent some factories or shipyards to help you out. The problem is that you have to pay for it. So at the start, the prices are very low, and as you're progressing through this, the prices go exponentially higher. So you can see here, we are getting, uh, for 14 factories, 420 US dollars per day. This is something that you pay every day, so be careful. You use them only if you have to. Like, if you're really behind the schedule, if you need more muskets to equip your troops, or you need more cannons, or whatever is necessary ammo, you can use a little bit of it, but if you use all of them, it doesn't pay off. Never pays off. It's just at this time, it's just better to pay um, and, and buy them from the market. Don't produce it at all. It just doesn't pay off. The same applies to the shipyards. Uh, you can you can use it a little bit if you if you need it, um, but it's not recommended. And also, uh, we're gonna talk about how to make money in this game uh, about about. Uh, basically making stuff and selling it on the market. Uh, if you're making something just to sell it, you never use uh, additional shipyards or factories. Never. It doesn't pay off ever. Well, uh, you can always change your, your people here. You can change officers that are responsible for uh, different um, sectors. So, for example, if I think that the Chief of Navy is bad, then you can see the, the most important statistical factors uh, for different um, chiefs. Uh, basically, you can replace him with somebody else. But currently, we have nobody that's better than him, so he will stay there. Uh, what they do is that they lower down the timers for research. And we're going to talk about uh, researches uh, right now. I'm just going to give you some basic recommendations when it comes to researching. If we go to the uh, Commander-in-Chief, we can see that the first thing to do would be to research Army Innovation 1. We're going to get the uh, barracks. Um, then we can go for either Continental Army or Army Innovation 2 because here we get the Fusiliers, we get actual professional artillery companies. Uh, with this one, we get Benedict Arnold and uh, plus one General's Limit. This is very important. So you can choose whatever you like out of these two. Maybe even um, Benedict Arnold is more important than Continental Army. But this is where you stop. And then uh, I would recommend uh, moving to Continental Army Departments. 
and then uh, going to Eastern Department because you can get a third general. It's not only enough to get a general, but you need a uh, general limit increase to have three generals. This means that you will be able to effectively f fight on three fronts at the same time. And then, uh, well, you can maybe go for Dragoons or Grenadiers. Uh, skirmishers, I think the path is a little bit problematic because you need to wait for Minutemen skills and it's not something that's very beneficial in my mind. Army Innovation 3 is really cool and uh, you can get some um, army limit increase and, and firearms production increase. Uh, you can get the guards company and another general. So this is very interesting. Uh, the rest you can do uh, as you please. Uh, if we talk about the uh, chief intelligence, we go there. And uh, we look at the first stuff that uh, we can find. Of course, uh, I would recommend going for college. It's important because you can increase the number of officers you have. And at the, the beginning of the game, you're going to struggle quite a bit. With all the fighting, um, you're going to be deficient when it comes to, to officers. And then I would recommend going for university because it doubles on the officer count. And then you can basically do whatever you like. Uh, you can go for a new general. Uh, you can go for more of a popularity thing like newspapers and cathedrals. You have a lot of options. It's completely up to you. But uh, I would recommend uh, just going for college and then going for university. Anything else is is um, your choice. Artillery chief. Well, this one is pretty interesting. There are a couple of paths here you can take. Uh, I would never go for four pounders. I don't think this branch is um, paying off. I would go for ordnance facilities. Uh, of course, uh, you get blacksmith. Blacksmith would increase... Uh, your production facilities, you will be able to produce more weapons and, and ammunition. Um, you can then decide to go for uh, Ordnance Innovation 2 and basically go for uh, upper field guns like 6 pounder or 12 pounder. They're a bit easier to get. Uh, we're going to talk separately in a separate video about how effective different types of cannons are and what you should go for. In this case, I ignored it and I went for Ironworks. This is also great, uh, really increases your production capacity. And uh, then you can choose to go through mortars or howitzers. Again, it's your choice. Uh, mortars take some more time to research, basically. Um, but they, they serve different purposes on the battlefield. And then you can decide. So you can either go for uh, field guns, 6-pounders and 12-pounders. Or you can go here. It's a bit uh, longer way to go for howitzers or mortars. But if you decide to go for howitzers and mortars, you can still use for your regular infantry. You can use British captured cannons. They're usually better than anything you can produce. So it's basically up to you. But uh, these are two branches that I will go for. Of course, always go for iron works. Mm, I think it's, it's a must just because it increases your uh, production output. Then we have uh, Quartermaster Chief uh, here. We have some interesting technologies as well. The first thing to research is wagon because it's very important. These are wagons that can follow your, they're dedicated regiments that can follow your troops around. They provide them uh, with provisions and ammunition, especially in battles that are very long, uh, that require like fighting between 10,000 and 10,000 men on the other side. Your cannon's gonna fire constantly. They're gonna need to resupply their ammo. Uh, then, I think it would be really good to go for horse posture. Um, you can go for uh, company supply or supply company. This is interesting one. Uh, regional warehouse is also interesting building. Grain mill would increase your provisions, but currently you cannot build it, actually. It's just in the technology tree, but not an actual building. Uh, then I would recommend uh, maybe going for uh, ranch because you get... And horses per week. That's that's awesome. Um, it, it's a really good uh, good choice. And the rest is basically uh, your decision. Whatever you need, look at the stats, and and that that's pretty much it. So first, go for wagons. Then you can go for horse pasture. Uh, you can go here. Then um, then you can go to this side to get to the ranch. It's um, it's your choice basically. Depending on your, your style, do you need a lot of uh, cavalry? Then uh, Chief Engineer is something that I really, really love. Here, uh, you need to go uh, down straight. So 
Uh, you need to get to a lumber mill and then uh, you can get improved civil buildings. But don't make the same mistake I did. I went directly from lumber mill to qualified engineers. Um, this is factory level. So the third level of buildings. This is level two. Without level two, you can go to level three. So first you need to do this research and then go here to get the fur factory, rub factory, cigar factory. These are the buildings that will keep your economy alive. So this is a must, basically. This one and this one. Then you can have a um, couple of decisions. Uh, you can go for U.S. State Musket, which is not really good. And then you can get to Virginia 76. This, this is a really good musket. So you can either go for this one and then maybe opt for Hunter's Rifle that's used by skirmishers. And then maybe Pennsylvania Rifle and Carabines. This is a good choice or you can basically skip this one and uh, switch onto this tree military engineers and then go to spanish musket uh, brown bass 69 and the french musket it's your choice basically when it comes to uh, line infantry or militia muskets um, i think that maybe this is a more cost effective way because virginia 76 is maybe not as good as um, uh, uh, Charville or Brown Bass 69, but it's goddamn close and it doesn't require forever to, to research it. So I would uh, strongly recommend going for it and then going for Hunter Rifle, Pennsylvania Rifle and Carabines uh, because they they will give you a lot of money later. We're going to talk about how to, to actually make money. Um, it's The rest of, of, of this is up to you, but uh, this is what I would do. And of course, uh, Chief of Naval Forces. First, you need this research. Then you go for a dockyard because it increases your production output. Then you go to Weaver Shop. Uh, light Warships. This will increase your textile production that you need to actually produce um, ships. And then um, I would recommend going to Naval Facilities and going down this road to textile mill because you get five textiles per building uh, it's really good uh, it gives you a lot of benefits um, but this is just to produce ships and sell them immediately i'm not talking about actually having a proper navy and, and fighting and everything i'm just talking from strictly economic point of view uh for chief of navy so um this one this one then uh, getting this one and then immediately shifting to uh, naval facilities and going for textile mill. Uh, you can build your ships and you sell them uh, right off the, the gate. Uh, this is a really, really good, the, probably the best way to make money in the game. And uh, there is also one more thing to talk about. It's uh, this reputation. You can see how much reputation you're gaining, how much reputation you're losing. Um, a reputation will increase if you fulfill some um, some tasks like or quests, like I don't know, capturing specific settlements or producing specific types of buildings or um, factories, whatever. And reputation will decrease if you are suffering casualties, if you're losing battles, uh, losing territories, uh, getting penalized because you did not uh, finish the quests on time. And you can use um, reputation to basically uh, buy off specific things. So here, if I need the uh, Continental Army Department's uh, ASAP, I can just click here. And then you wait for the day to end. Let's just see that real quick. And we get a notification here that another project is ready so we can utilize it from the get-go let's go with this one for example well that's it when it comes to headquarters and when it comes to technologies managing your production is the most important part of your economy but also the way to equip your army properly with all the things they need from ammunition to the weapons to the cannons um here we can see some raw materials, uh, everything from coal, salt pattern, wood, copper, and iron. We can obtain all of these through building mines. The more mines you have in specific places where these raw materials exist, 
the bigger the output. Every week you get new raw materials, with the exception of textiles. We said that specific regions um, can produce textiles, but you need buildings for them. And you need specific, um, of course, technologies to increase textile production. Here we can see production points. Um, every single square here um, that you can see represents one production point. So we have 15 here, 15 here, and 10. The red ones are basically, uh, that's the, the lack of production capacity. And uh, we can see the numbers, 69 per day. Uh, this is uh, US musket. We, we can see the numbers in the storage that we have. Uh, here we can see the expenditure of producing them every single day. We can see how much iron it takes and wood per day. And here we can see the requirements. We're using three per day uh, out of 45. And every week we're gonna get some new iron. And uh, we are using one wood and we um, are having 87 in the stockpile right now. Uh, so uh, we have different types of, of muskets. For example, uh, this is US dead musket and it's used for regular infantry. Uh, short brown best 69, for example, is used by cavalry units. And uh, hunter rifle is used by skirmishers. The more, uh, the higher the complexity of the weapon, uh, the more it takes to produce it. So, for example, I researched new technology and now I have a better musket. So we're going to go here, click on the musket, and we are looking for Spanish 55. This one is better. Here you can uh, select continuous production, you can select spe specified number. Uh, of them to be made, but we usually go for continuous production. But now it's at the bottom um, of our production chain. We don't really like that. We will like to produce as uh, many Spanish 55s as we can. And we just move it up or down the priority line. Whatever you need, you do that. It's good to have all this stacked with multiple things to produce because sometimes you will just run out of raw materials. Uh, maybe if you're producing too many uh, mortars or too many cannons, you're going to run out of copper. And then you want something else to be there so your factory capacity will be utilized properly. But what if uh, we only get 45 per day? It will take forever to equip all of our uh, regiments uh, with uh, Spanish 55. So if I want to increase the um, production of Spanish 55s, I go to the same place. I get another one here. Let's go up. Oh, <laughs> I kind of messed it up here, but it's okay. Uh, so we can get double, we can get triple, whatever your industrial capacity is, you can pull it off. Um, the next thing to see is uh, basically cannons. You can produce different kinds of cannons. As long as you have them researched, you can produce them. And uh, we have uh, ships. Ships are built independently. Uh, they have nothing to do with production points here. Uh, they have a lot to do with uh, shipbuilding points. So, for example, we can get, uh, I don't know, small transport boats. Uh, let's click here. And um, it takes four days. We're producing 32% of the, the ship per day. So it takes basically a little bit more than three days to complete. And after three, three days, maybe three and a half days, you're going to get small transport and you can go to the market and actually find all the things that that uh, you need. You can buy it, you can sell it, and uh, we're going to talk about how to make money in a short while. I just wanted to remind you when it comes to production capabilities, you can increase them by building factories. Uh, over here, uh, we go to construction management, uh, we click on factories and we can build them. It takes time, of course, or uh, if we look at the settlements like New Haven, uh, you can build uh, iron works or blacksmiths. They beef up your production capacity quite a bit. Or here you can, um, if we talk about shipbuilding uh, capacities, you can upgrade uh, to like uh, docks. Uh, you can go to, again, uh, construction management and uh, you can go to shipbuilding capabilities. All the coastal areas um, you can use to build those. And uh, the more you have them, the more ships you can produce. Marketplace is the best way to make some money. For example, we have excessive amounts of goods like fur. We have 20. We don't really use fur for anything in industry. So we can just auto sell at, uh, let's say, 10. Can we go to 10? Yes. And we just click here. We get this amount of money that... We can see will be deposited on our financial report 
And uh, if you want to see how much something is worth, you can just type minus one. If you try to sell something, you get, in this case, for fur, 280 US dollars. But if we try to buy it, we just press one, click there. It's uh, 420 that you have to pay for it. So these are the prices. But do not worry, prices do not change. They always stay the same. They're always stable. You can do the same with ammunition. Maybe you have way uh, too much ammunition in our storage. So... Let's go to, I don't know, about 500 and auto sell. So whenever your ammo production goes above 500, you'll be selling it for profits. Um, I don't really recommend selling like textiles, uh, provisions you cannot buy, for example. Uh, you can sell cigarettes, you can sell rum. Uh, do not sell wagons, never sell them. We're going to talk about prices a bit later. You also can do the same to resources. We have wood. Maybe we only need uh, 50 wood. So let's go to something like 50. And everything above 50 will be sold as it's, uh, as it's produced every week. Every week you get uh, new resources. Every week you get some new goods with the exception of ammo and wagons. This is something that you produce in your factories. But everything else would be updated uh, weekly. Um, you can also sell your construction material. We have so much construction material. But be aware you cannot really buy it. You can only get it yourself. So be careful with it. Uh, the next thing to have is uh, muskets. So it's better to use raw materials to produce stuff and then just sell it. Maybe we have uh, too many U.S. muskets and we are already starting to produce uh, Spanish 55s. They are superior muskets, so we're just going to sell maybe 2,000 of them. So let's let's go back to minus 2,000 actually. And we sell them. You can see 13,000. That's a lot of money. Especially if you're low on cash, it's a, it's a great way to make some money. The same you can do with cannons. Uh, we have uh, a lot of six pounders. We have a lot of three pounders. So let's just sell them. Occasionally, we can sell them. You can do the same things with ships. And now I'm going to share some financial details with you guys. It's time to talk about sales values. Uh, guys, do not worry. I know that there is a lot of data here, but I will be sharing all of this data with you. You can do whatever you like with it. Uh, I give it away. Uh, it took me forever to research all the technologies, to be able to get the data and do the calculations. So I would highly, highly appreciate if you would like, share, and consider subscribing. Uh, it goes a long way, and I appreciate it in advance. Uh, we're going to start with goods. Uh, first is textiles, first cigarettes and rum. Well, uh, we can see that cigarettes uh, are the most profitable of all the goods. The problem currently is that you cannot really get them. Um, they do not exist in the game. Probably when we unlock all the 13 colonies, some of the southern colonies are producing cigarettes. Uh, we are currently in the north and around Massachusetts, New York. We cannot really do that, but we can use fur as the second best way to make money, uh, then rum, and only then textiles. You can see that textiles are much, much less value than other goods, and I believe the reason is because they have more practical use. So you can get uh, elite infantry with them, and especially shipbuilding uh, is, is super necessary to have textiles. So even if you don't plan to have a navy, I do not recommend selling textiles. Just build ships, sell them, and you're going to get much, much higher profits uh, from just selling ships. But we're going to talk about ship uh, prices a bit later. Let's go to resources. We have wood, copper, coal, construction material, uh, salt powder, horses, and iron. Uh, the most valuable one would be copper and then iron. Uh, construction material uh, is impossible to buy uh, and I do not recommend selling it early on but a bit later into the game you can um, especially into more of a late game scenario it can be a very a very good source of extra money uh, horses uh, are very expensive uh, this is the sale value you should never sell them uh, if for example if you need a cavalry regiment uh, it would take three companies uh, times 80 that would be 240 horses and if you want to buy them the price would be around between 60 and 70 us dollars per horse so you do the math it's the, the prices are insane uh it's very difficult to get horses so try not to uh, trade them uh, with other powers uh do not use them in diplomacy as much and uh yeah 
don't really sell horses unless you're super desperate or you do not plan to use cavalry at all. Uh, then uh, we have actual production and things here are a little bit different. So I have a specific formula of how I did my own projections. Uh, basically, all the things here we can see uh, uh, are basically profits. But how do we calculate profits? Uh, I took the entire uh, production points. So 15 production points in the full stack or the full slot. And uh, production lasted for the entire week, seven days with a full slot. And the goods that are produced are then sold. And um, we can see uh, here a profit is the selling price. For example, let's say we have uh, 1,000 muskets. And uh, we sell them for... 10,000 uh, US dollars and our production price would be 8,000. So the profit would be 2,000 per week. This is the amount of profit we get per week. Uh, production price consists of uh, uh, production price of the factories. When you look at the, 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 the basically uh, production, you can see the price uh, every day for seven days. Uh, even though these are your factories, still cost money to produce specific weapons or tools or cannons. Uh, on top of that, I uh, introduced the sales values. For example, we are using, uh, we need 30 copper per week to produce specific cannon. And uh, I would multiply uh, 30 with uh, the value of copper on the market, uh, would be 98, and you get um, the value of raw material used. And you would add it to the production price and you get production, uh, overall production price. So this is the methodology that I use. I hope it's, it's not too chaotic. You can still see the formula by yourself if I didn't explain it well. Uh, the same technology was used across the board. So sometimes if you have advanced technology, it will uh, basically increase the production capacity uh, for guns or, or muskets. It's not the case here. So all the data was used at the same level of technology. And uh, I did not use any rented factories. I do not recommend using them if you're uh, planning to make money to sell uh, your muskets, to sell your cannons, your ships. Do not rent factories or uh, dockyards. It do doesn't pay off ever. So you should never do it if you're planning to sell it for, for profits. Uh, here, the first thing to see is uh, ammo. You get a bit more than 2,000. Uh, it's a very low resource demanding production. So you can do it very early in the game and you can get some extra money if you don't need as much ammo. Uh, wagons should never ever be produced because uh, their production price is much higher than their purchasing price. Uh, especially... Uh, you should not produce them to sell them. It's it's insane waste of resources, so never do that. Um, well, sometimes you cannot buy them. There is not sufficient uh, wagons on the market, so you have to produce them for your own supply regiments. That's a different thing. But for your for selling, never. It just doesn't pay off. We're going to talk a little bit about muskets. So civilian muskets are the only available muskets at the start of the game, and uh, per week you get this amount of money. Uh, it's not much. So uh, US musket is the, the next technological uh, development and you, learn, you earn even less. Even though it's a superior gun to civilian musket, you can produce less of it and it just production prices is, is higher. So you you'll earn less money. Virginia 76 is an absolute champ here. It's easy to research. It goes uh, after the US musket. Uh, it's a it's a pretty solid gun on the battlefield itself. Maybe not as good as some other guns, um, but you can get almost three and a half thousand for it per week. Uh, that's tremendous. That's the, the best of all the, the guns uh, in the game. Uh, you can see Spanish Musket, uh, Brown Best 69 is also a really capable gun. Uh, good price. Uh, the, the French rifle, uh, Infantry Carabine is is. It's got them um, a great price. The problem is that infantry carabine uh, is difficult to research. You need to go to hunter rifle, Pennsylvania rifle, and only then you can research infantry carabine and dragoon carabine. So something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, the same is with brown bass and uh, uh, the French uh, musket. It's just very difficult to research. Uh, the next one would be uh, Hunter Rifle and Pennsylvania Rifle. These are skirmish rifles. They're different from muskets. And uh, they're not so cost-effective, I would say. Hunter Rifle is pretty solid. Well, Pennsylvania Rifle, not so much. 
Uh, Brown Best 69, this is the cavalry version. It's also really good. So you should always consider selling it. Uh, Dragoon Carabine 57 is, uh, is, a, is a great... Uh, Great rifle. Um, it, it's used for cavalry, of course. Uh, it gives cavalry better stats than um, than the previous one I mentioned, uh, Brown Best sixty nine. Uh, oh, the the short one. Uh, but also, uh, you can sell it for a lot of money. It's difficult to research. Uh, it's research of the same technology as uh, Carabine fifty seven. Um, but yeah, uh, these are my favorites. I would uh, highly insist to go for Virginia seventy six. Then cannons. Uh, well, we have uh, field uh, guns here. Uh, three pounder field gun is above uh, 4,000. This is a solid price. But here we have underlined unrealistic production capacity because it requires almost 20 copper per week. And this is the only gun you can basically manufacture at the start of the game. And uh, it's very difficult to get uh, 18 or 19 copper per week. Uh, then we have uh, four pounders. Uh, they're a bit uh, less um, uh, less demanding when it comes to copper, but they also uh, provide you with lesser profits. Uh, six pounder is pretty solid, and twelve pounder is actually great. Um, the requirements for copper are high, maybe not as high as uh, three pounder, but still, this is something you can get uh, a bit later in the game, and uh, you should be having mines that are kind of getting copper or iron or other raw materials so you can actually afford it at this point in time when you have this technology it's a good way to make money uh mortars are insane you can say uh, that eight inch mortar uh, will give you almost thirteen thousand per week but it's super unrealistic because the requirements are almost 40 copper per week and it's impossible to get even at the the late stage of the campaign so maybe you can count on one third of of this production which is still pretty good like about four thousand um here 10 inch mortar not as cost effective uh 13 inch mortar uh is uh, much better and it will require 8.4 uh copper per week so it's it's more cost efficient when it comes to um copper usage than than 8 inch mortar howitzers are even better. Here we can see uh, almost 4,000 for 5.5 inch. And uh, for the H uh, 8 inch howitzer, we have over 5,000. And it has the same requirement for copper as the um, a 13 inch C motor. So it it's a really good value, basically. Uh, naval guns. Uh, well, they have uh, terrible value. I wrote here huge losses. You can see that uh, minus 6,000, minus 5,000, minus 6,000. These are uh, correct uh, numbers. Basically, you should never, ever produce naval guns. If you're producing them, you're losing money. If you need them, you buy them or you capture enemy ships and use their cannons uh, because the production prices are insane. Uh, you should never produce them for your own ships and you should definitely not try to, to sell them. Uh, I'm missing data for higher caliber naval guns like 12 or 24, 32 um, pounder guns just because uh, I did not have the, 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 the time to research the technologies. It would take forever. And uh, we go to most profitable uh, production in this case would be shipping or ships. Uh, the, the first available ones are uh, Unrated Cutter and Unrated Merchantman. We can see that Merchantman is, is very solid here. Um, I recommend producing it and just selling it. Uh, small transport, medium transport. We can see that the bigger ship does not necessarily mean more money. Uh, we can see some uh, battleships here, um, up to the, the six-rate ships. And the uh, Sloop of War gives you the most money out of... Uh, these smaller battleships, but I'm missing data for bigger ships. So uh, for the same reasons, I just could not research the technologies uh, on time. It would take me forever. And if you guys have some extra data, I would appreciate sharing the comment section as well. We can add it to the, um, to the description later. So I would highly, highly appreciate it. And uh, it's important to understand that ships require wood and textiles. So do not sell wood, do not sell textiles if you're planning to, to build ships. They're the most cost-effective way to make money. And uh, 
it's important to understand that ship building and everything else is completely different. Ship building is using um, basically docks, uh, naval capacity, while um, everything else that I mentioned here would use actual, actual factory capacity. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. It goes a long way for me. Um, highly appreciate it. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.